All right. So welcome back to Fusion Friday. This week's model, we are going to be looking at a simple machine called a wheel and axle. And we're just going to create this basic little assembly. What we can do in Fusion is we can actually create um, what are called joints, which allow us to be able to visualize the movement of this wheel actually rotating in Fusion. So to start, we're just going to look at the drawings for this design and we're going to model out each of the different parts. Okay. So what I would recommend doing is actually doing all three of these parts in one fusion file. All right. So I'm going to move a little quickly when designing these first couple of components. So feel free to pause the video as you need to, but I'm just going to start with part number one, with just drawing a little base rectangle 50 by a hundred. And then I'll just add a couple of lines here. Um, for those two little side plates on my bracket. All right, so I'll go ahead and dimension those. And again, I still wanna make sure that my dimensions are, or that my sketches are fully constrained, which this one now is. So I'll go ahead and extrude up the different features. This little part of the box goes up by 10. And, oops, that's not what I meant to do. It's meant to reveal the sketch. And these parts go up by 100. All right now what I want to do is just add another sketch to create that little circular archway and also create the circle for the hole. All right, so what I'm going to do is make sure that it's tangent up on the top and then also tangent on these two sides right here. And then I'll just create another circle that is concentric with that. That is my diameter of 20. Then if I finish this sketch, now I can go ahead and I can actually just extrude all of these little corners and kind of cut them all away until it hits my component. All right, so that is my first part. That's part number one, all done and dusted. So once you have your parts, what you could actually do is in Fusion, if you open up the Bodies drop-down menu, you can right-click on that and then you can click on this Create Components from Bodies now what that does is it create it into a component. And what components can do is they allow interactions between other components to create assemblies. And right now, this one is kind of anchored in place. I'm gonna unanchor it by right clicking on my component one and clicking unground from parent. Now, if I click it, I can move it around and my sketch is still there in the same spot, but my component can move freely. So it's very convenient when you're creating multiple components in one sketch that you can just kind of pick it up and move it off to the side when you need to. So I'm actually going to hide this sketch now. And now that I have my first component done, I'm actually going to start my second component. So when I'm looking at this, I am actually going to focus for my wheel on just the, uh, just the section view here. If I just look at this section view, I actually have all the information that I need to create my wheel. So what I'll do is I'll create a new sketch and I'm going to actually start this one. I'll still start this one from the bottom. Actually, I'm going to keep that there. So I'm going to just say capture position. I can always move it back um, when I don't need it. But what I want to do is I want to start. We're going to actually create. Um, we're going to use a new tool um, called the revolve tool, which what that does is it creates um, a 360 degree revolution of a sketch that you draw. Okay, first thing I wanna do is I kinda wanna add a little center line for the circle that's shown in the section view. So I'm just gonna draw just an arbitrary line and I do wanna give it a dimension just so that Fusion thinks that it's fully constrained. It doesn't matter what that dimension is, I just wanna give it something. Right, now what I wanna do is make this a construction line. To do that, I will just hover over it and then click the X key. And now it is a construction line. Another way that you can do this is just by clicking right up there where it says construction. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to create that little, I want to create the almost eye shape that we see in the top of the section view there. So I'm just going to kind of arbitrarily draw out um, an eye. And I'm not going to worry too much about the dimensions right now. I'm just trying to get the general shape of an eye. Okay, and boom. All right, so we got something that looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna come back in and dimension it. And if I'm looking at this from the 
from my construction line to the top, that is actually going to be the radius. So I can make that 50. And then from the bottom to that center line is my other little radius there, um, which in this case, if our diameter is 30, our radius would be 15. Now we can adjust these two heights to be what they need to be. This one we want to be 10. And this one we want to be 15. Okay, same thing on this side. We want it 10 and 15. Perfect, everything is looking fantastic so far. So now what we want to do is we want to add a dimension from the side there, locking that in at 10. And then on this side, locking this in at 10, which it seems like we've already got, which is great. Okay, and then the last thing that we need is we probably just have to make sure that our, all of our lines are parallel to each other. So if we make these two parallel, that's already in place. Maybe we could try making this horizontal with this. There we go, that locked that in place. Then this to this, that locked that in place. And if we just keep these, yep, if we just add a couple of horizontal and vertical constraints, that will fix everything to make sure that it all stays in line with each other. And now we're actually good. We are all set and done with this part of our sketch. So what we'll do is we'll finish the sketch. And then what we can do is we can use the revolve tool. So up here next to extrude, you'll see this tool called revolve. If you click on that little eye section that we drew, and then under your axis, you select that little hidden line that we drew, you'll notice that we create this wheel, right? So that's a super easy way to draw out wheels. And I'm actually gonna hide my first component to just focus on the wheel for a second. Okay, now we just gotta add that little hole, okay? So to do this, we're gonna just create a little sketch. And to create all six of the holes, we're gonna wanna use a circular pattern, right? And you could do this in one of two ways. You can either do this in the sketch or you can actually do it as a three-dimensional feature. So I'm gonna show you how to do it in a three-dimensional feature for this video. So our path for our circles is, whoa, at 65. So we're gonna to wanna to do that and just also make this a construction line. So same thing, just press X. And then we'll just start with one of our circles here. We'll draw one circle on the line, make it radius 10. And then if we just add a horizontal and vertical constraint from uh, this point to this point, we see that we now have a fully constrained circle. So we're good to go there. And we can just go ahead and extrude that circle through 10 because that will get us all the way through our circle on that side. Okay, now to copy it, what we want to do is we want to create. And if we scroll all the way down here, we'll see pattern. We can create a circular pattern for a feature. And then if we just click on this circle, and then our axis, we want to we want to create it along that circle that we made. So we can reveal our sketch again, just to make sure that we get it right, put it there. And then we just got to have um, that we want six of them, mine defaulted to that yours might not, and then we just click okay. And then we've got our wheel. So that's our wheel. So again, what we'll do is we'll make it a component. So we'll right click, say create component from body. And now we've got two components, we've got our little We've got our wheel and we've got our little guy, right? And we can start to see, we can start to move them around, start to kind of fit them into place, all right? But again, we want it to be precise. So we'll look at how to actually do that in a second. But real quick, what we want to do is we want to finally design the shaft, right? And if you look at the drawing for it, you'll see that parts of the design are created um, for a free running fit and parts are created for a similar fit. So the reason why we have that is because that end of the shaft, the similar fit, is meant to fit inside of this little, um, call it a bracket, and just be full, or and just be fixed to the bracket itself. But we want the wheel to be able to spin and roll around freely. So we want to design that as a free running fit. So we will create our final sketch, and I'm also gonna create this one on this side plane. We'll just capture the position of those for now, um, and hide them while we go ahead and do this. So for our axle, right, let's go ahead and just start with our diameters, right? If we want this, um, uh, this outer diameter to be a free running fit, that's meant to fit in our 30 diameter wheel, we want to make the shaft 
0.3 smaller, so 29.7, boom, okay? And then similarly, for the inner diameter, we want that to be a similar fit. So we'll go 0.15 smaller than the inner diameter of that bracket, which was 20. So we want this one to be 19.85, okay? Simple as that. That's it for the sketch. And then to extrude it, what we can do is we can do this a couple of different ways. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to extrude this in two steps. I'm gonna extrude the outer one out only by half of it. I'm gonna go by 40. And we'll say okay. I'm gonna reveal my sketch again and then bring the inner one out by 50. And then what I could do is with this half of my um, little shaft here, I can create a mirror of this object based on its back plane. Okay, now I have my whole axle, right? So this is the, the spindle or the axle. Um, we have our wheel and we have our bracket. So we'll go ahead and finally make this a component. And now we've got our three components. One, two, three. So now how do we actually get them to interlock with each other? Well, now that you have them as components, what you can do is up here in the little assemble tab, you'll see this option called a joint, right? And a joint creates that relationship between two components. So what we want to do first and what I'm going to do first for this one is I'm going to connect the axle to the bracket. So typically when you have a um, shaft and a hole, the best place to actually start that joint is on the end of the shaft and the end of the hole. So I'll create, I'll click on just the end of the shaft and then it kind of goes away clear. And then for my second component, I will click on this part of my bracket and you'll see the, sh the axle kind of moves there. And right now it's defaulting to a revolve, but I actually want that to be fixed. So I'll go over here to my motion, right? You have a position and a motion tab. If I click on motion, I want my type of motion to be rigid. Right now, it kind of does that little shaking, dramatic animation to show that those two parts are fixed together. Okay, that's what I want, so I'll click OK. Now, if I try to move it, you'll see that they are moving as one. Okay, then we'll just add our wheel. So same process, we'll click on joint, and we'll click on the inside circle where this little um, red, green, and blue symbol is and then find that symbol on our axle, click there. It kind of jumps there. And this one is also defaulting to a rigid connection. And if you look, it's not necessarily centered. I kind of want to shift it over a little bit. So I can just take this arrow and drag it until I'm happy and it looks centered, okay? And my motion for this one, I actually want to change this to revolve. And now you see my wheel is turning, which is great. That's exactly what we want. Okay, now if we click on the wheel, oh, uh, okay, cut back in here. Okay, now for my wheel, what I want to do is the same process. So I'll click on joint. I will click on the, I'm going to actually try my hardest to, sometimes fusion can be a little finicky when you do these uh, wheels. All right, so now if you try to just rotate the wheel, now you can see that it's spinning freely and all nice and good. And that's it. That's how you make that assembly. And this process um, is how you would use this little joint feature is how you would um, cr create that relationship between any component.